Hello everyone and welcome to today's sixth grade ELA lesson. I have prepared a PowerPoint, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. All right, so here is the PowerPoint and it's going to be on point of view. That is our topic for today's lesson. All right, so today's goal is the following. I can determine the point of view of a story, which can be first person, second person, or third person, and there's three, get three categories for third person. There's third person limited, third person objective, and third person omniscient. So basically, we're going to be able to determine the point of view of a story given these five options. So on today's agenda, first we are going to be having a vocabulary review. Next, we'll be participating in an activity where we identify the voice that is being used in a sentence. After that, we'll identify the point of view, specifically focusing on the three different types of points of views for third person. And finally, we will recap and conclude the lesson. So for this lesson, you will need materials of paper and pencil. So first and foremost, we will be reviewing some vocabulary. So our first vocabulary word or words, I should say, phrase, is point of view. And what that means is, who is telling the story? From which perspective or angle? For example, am I the one telling the story? So is it coming from me? Or are you telling the story? Or is it from the perspective of an animal? Or from the perspective of an object using personification, where it's like the object has characteristics like humans? So that's point of view. So again, who is telling the story? From what angle? Then another vocabulary word is first person. And first person refers to oneself. So it's going to use the pronouns I and we. So for example, we could say I am riding my bike, or we are reading, we are riding our bikes, or we are reading books. That's always like referring to oneself or a group of people, which includes oneself. So on your piece of paper, I'm going to have you write first person, and then a hyphen, and then you'll write I and we, because those are the pronouns that are commonly used for first person. And after you're done with that, I'm going to introduce you to second person. Second person refers to another person or people, so other than yourself. And it's going to use the pronoun you or you all. For example, you enjoy riding your bike. That's second person. Or you all enjoy riding your bikes. That's for the plural one. So on your piece of paper, I'll have you write second person and then a hyphen, and then you'll write the pronouns you and you all. And after you're done with that, let's move on to third person. Third person is also going to refer to another person or people or an object or objects, and he uses the pronouns he, she, it, and or they. So for example, he enjoys riding his bike, she enjoys riding her bike, and they enjoy riding their bikes. This is all in third person, he, she, and they. So on your piece of paper, I'd like you to write third person, and then hyphen, and then he, comma, she, comma, they. You can also say it for the pronouns. Those are all pronouns that clue you into the fact that this would be third person. All right, so to continue, so we already talked about point of view, which is who's telling the story from what angle. And we also talked about third person, which refers to another person or people, as well as objects. Now there's three types of third person. There's third person limited, third person objective, and third person omniscient. And no worries, we will have a lot of practice with these later on in this lesson. But for now, I'd like to introduce you to, to these three vocabulary terms. So third person limited, is a technique in which the author will stick closely to one character and one point of view at a time. So it's kind of like limited to only one point of view. It's almost like tunnel vision where you can only see like the one in front of you. You can't see like all the other characters, for example. It's sticking to one particular character and that particular character's point of view, just that one. And then maybe for another chapter, it might switch to another character, but it's always just one character at a time, one point of view at a time. That's why it's like limited or kind of like focused. And if you want, you can write down this definition on your piece of paper. Again, third person limited, and then a hyphen, and then author sticks closely to one character and one point of view at a time. So if needed, you can pause the video to write that down.
All right, our next vocabulary word is third person objective. So you can write on your paper third person objective. And this is when the narrator, which is the person who tells the story, is kind of neutral. So he or she would present the story with more of an observational tone, like stating what he or she might have seen or might have heard. So remember, it's stating only the facts and not necessarily the internal aspects. So it's not really talking about the opinions or feelings of the characters. It's only stating the outside facts, so like what a person could observe, kind of. So after you write third person objective, you can write down this definition about the narrator being neutral and how the story has an observational tone where it stakes only the facts rather than the opinions or feelings of the characters. So you can pause the video to copy that down if you need. Our next vocabulary term, which is the third of the three ones for third person, is going to be third person omniscient. And omniscient kind of means all knowing. So the narrator kind of knows everything that's about to happen. So basically for this kind, the narrator can enter any character at any time and tell us what's going on in the heads of multiple characters. So he can kind of be like everywhere at once. Whereas third person limited is only one character, one point of view at a time. And third person objective only talks about the observations. But for third person omniscient, the narrator can enter any character at all and tell us what's going on in the heads of multiple characters. So then the narrator can kind of like skip around in the character's heads. So you can pause the video to write down that definition as well. All right, so now that we're all done with that, I have a chart here that talks a little bit more about the point of view. And so first of all, we're going to focus on the pronouns. So first person is going to use these following pronouns. And we wrote some of these down, but if you want, you can always add the other ones. So first person singular would be things like I, me, mine, my, and myself. Notice that they generally have the mine, myself, like referring to oneself. That's a common theme. So that's a singular. Plural for more than one would be we, us, our, and ours for first person. So all of these are first person pronouns. Now, if we wanted to do second person, we could say you, your, yours, or yourself. Those all refer to second person, so a person other than yourself. And you can copy those down if you want to. Now, third person would be he, she, they, them, their, or him, his, her, those are all going to be third person. Again, referring to someone other than yourself. We could say Jill or Peter or Bob, as long as it's someone other than yourself. And third person is going to have three different types of point of view. There's third person objective, and that was the second one that we wrote, where the narrator describes the actions of the characters but does not know their thoughts. So again, it's that observational tone only. Then there was third person limited, where the narrator knows the thoughts of only one character, so it's very limited or focused. And then there's third person omniscient, where the narrator knows the thoughts of more than one character at a time. So those are the three types of third person for point of view. And I do want to make a quick note on this. When we're talking about point of view, so like when we're trying to determine the point of view, it's important to not focus on the dialogue within the passage. I'm going to show you what I mean through an example. So if I was to say, if I was to read from a book, for example, although I created this passage, but if I was to read, my favorite treat is ice cream. However, my sister's favorite treat is cherry pie. She once told me, cherry pie tops all the rest of the treats by far. I disagree. This passage would be first person rather than third person because we're not going to concentrate on the dialogue of what she said, for example, cherry pie would technically be third person that like she once told me cherry pie tops all the rest of the trees by far. But instead, we're gonna focus on what's outside of the dialogue. In this case, my favorite treat is ice cream. We have that keyword my, which tells us that it's first person as does the sentence I disagree. Talking about I refers to first person as well. So again, we won't be focusing on the dialogue when we're trying to determine the point of view. So to summarize, third person limited is just one point of view. Third person objective gives neutral observations, so just the dialogue and actions, just the observation part. 
and third person omniscient, which means all knowing, tells us what's going on in the heads of multiple characters. So the author can kind of skip around in the heads of those multiple characters. So now we're going to do an activity called identify the voice. So basically for this activity, we'll be focusing on three points of view. So we've got first person, second person, and third person. So right now we're not going to get into the three types of third person. We're only going to be focusing on first person, second person, or third person, applying our knowledge of the pronouns. So again, first person is going to use the pronouns I and we. Second person will use the pronouns you and you all. And third person will use the pronouns he, she, et, they. And you do probably hopefully have this on your notes as well. So you'll be able to apl apply what you wrote on your notes to find the answers for these activities. So we're going to go through some guided practice first. So we'll kind of like solve these together. So identify the voice for the following passage. I am 11 years old. So would this sentence be first person? which uses the pronouns I, my, mine, we? Would it be second person, where it uses the pronouns you, your, yours, yourself? Or would it be third person, where it uses the pronouns he, she, it, they, their, that kind of thing? So again, identify the voice, first person, second person, or third person, for the sentence, I am 11 years old. That one would be first person. We know that it's first person because of the pronouns, because I is one of the pronouns that goes with first person, so that's how we know. Let's try another example. Have you ever been to Disneyland? Okay, so my question to you is, have you ever been to Disneyland? Is that going to be first person, second person, or third person? Again, refer to the piece of paper where you wrote down the pronouns for each person to figure out if have you ever been to Disneyland is first person, second person, or third person. If you said second person, you are correct. We know that it's second person because we have our pronoun you. You, yourself, yours, those are all second person. We don't have I, we don't have he or she or any of that. We have you and you refers to second person. So again, it's important to refer to our chart where we have all those pronouns and the voices that they belong to written down. All right, next one. He has two sisters and one brother. Is this first person, second person, or third person? Well, this one's a little more complicated because it seems like there's quite a few characters. We have two sisters, we have one brother, and we have he. But he is going to be the subject, and we're going to focus on the subject. And looking at our chart of pronouns, we can see that he falls under the third person category. So he is third person. So is she. If I had said she has two sisters and one brother, that would still be third person because it didn't say you have two sisters and one brother. It didn't say I have two sisters and one brother. It said he, he has two sisters and one brother. He falls under the category of third person. Okay, so now that you are kind of getting the hang of this, let's try some independent practice, which means that I'm gonna read the sentence to you, and then you'll decide on your own whether the sentence refers to first person, second person, or third person using your chart of pronouns. So our first one is, my birthday is July 20th. Is this first person, second person, or third person? If you said first person, you are correct. We have that keyword of my, which refers to first person according to your chart. How about this one, which is also a tongue twister. She sells seashells at the seashore. Is this first person, second person, or third person? If you said third person, you are correct. He, she, it, those are all referring to third person, just as they do. They does the pronoun they. So I could have said they sell seashells at the seashore and it still would have been third person. All right, how about this one? This is also a tongue twister. How much wood would woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Instead of a pronoun, we have our subject. And that's your hint there for which person it is. We'll be looking at our subject instead of a pronoun. For how much wood would woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Is it going to be first person, second person, or third person? If you said 
third person, you are correct. That's because woodchuck, which is our subject, refers to it. A woodchuck is an animal, so it's kind of like an it. So woodchuck is going to be third person because he, she, it, they are all third person. All right, let's try another one. This one is going to have two answers. So it's I scream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. So which two voices does this sentence represent? All right, so this one will represent both first person and second person, and I'll show you why. So first person, if we recall from our chart of pronouns, first person is I, my, mine, are, we, that kind of thing. And we have both I and we in this exclamation. So I and we both refer to first person. Now we also have second person because we have a you in here. We have you screen. And you, your, yours, yourself are all second person. So we've got I, we, which is first person. And then we've got you, which is second person. So therefore, this one will be first person and second person. All right, next one. Identify the voice for the following. We like to watch comedies. And comedies are like funny shows. So we like to watch comedies. Is this going to be first person, second person, third person? If you said first person, you are correct. First person is I, my, mine, are, we, those are all first person. So we is right here. So we like to watch comedies would be first person. All right, so our next activity is going to be identifying the point of view, but from the perspective of the three categories of third person, which we also wrote down notes for. So you can refer to your notes for this activity. So just to review, there are three categories for third person point of views. We've got third person limited, which is limited to only one point of view, and it says it in its name limited, so think really focused on just one character, one point of view. Then we've got third person objective, which is neutral observations. It tells the story without describing any character's thoughts or opinions or feelings, so it's very observational. So only the character's dialogues and actions are narrated. So it's like if there is an outside observer, it only talks about what the outside observer could observe. It doesn't talk about like the internal aspects, such as the character's thoughts, opinions, or feelings. So it's very objective rather than subjective. And the last category is third person omniscient, which means all knowing. So it's kind of like it tells us what's going on in the heads of multiple characters. So these can be the thoughts, opinions, feelings, the facts, dialogue, actions, anything. It tells us everything that's going on in the heads of multiple characters as well as their actions. Okay, so first we're going to go through some guided practice for this. So what you are going to do for this activity, along with me, is to identify the point of view so basically, I'm going to read a passage, and you're going to figure out whether this passage is third person limited, where it's focused on just one person, or if it's third person objective, where it's a neutral narrator, so kind of just an observational tone, or if it's third person omniscient, where the narrator goes into the heads of all the characters. Okay, so let's read the passage. Elizabeth felt excited when she heard that 50 people were coming to watch the softball game, and so did Claire. Mary felt nervous, though, and Grace felt terrified. All right. So if you want to, you can read the passage again. And my question to you is, is this passage from the point of view of third person limited, where it's just for one point of view, one person, one character? Or is it third person objective, where it's kind of an observational tone? Or is it third person omniscient, where the author is kind of getting into the heads of all the characters, kind of telling the reader how all the characters are feeling? If you said that it's third person omniscient, you are correct. And that's because the author is indeed getting into the heads of all the characters to tell the reader how they feel. It's saying that Elizabeth felt excited, and so did Claire, so Claire felt excited too and talks about how Mary felt nervous and Grace felt terrified. So again, the author is going into the heads of all the characters, telling us what all the characters, how Elizabeth, Claire, Mary, and Grace felt. their different emotions. So that's a third person omniscient. Let's try another one. 
And again, for this passage, you'll be figuring out if it's third person limited, third person objective, or third person omniscient. So let's read it together. Tim ordered a pizza. As soon as it arrived, he immediately started eating it. He ate the whole pizza in less than five minutes. Is this an example of third person limited, where it's talking about just one person, one point of view at a time? Is it third person objective, where it's a neutral narrator, where the narrator is kind of showing what he or she might observe, where it's just stating facts, not the opinions or feelings? Or is it third person omniscient, where the author is all knowing and can tell us what's going on in the heads of multiple characters? If you said third person objective, you are correct. It's kind of like if an outside observer was watching Tim, he would see Tim order a pizza. He would see Tim immediately starting start to eat the pizza as soon as it arrived. And if he timed Tim, he would see that Tim ate the whole pizza in less than five minutes. So it's from a very observational point of view, kind of like an outside observer. It doesn't talk about how Tim felt, like maybe he felt hungry, but you can kind of see that he was probably hungry based on his actions, things like that. So again, it's an observational tone rather than going into the feelings or emotions that Tim might be feeling. All right, let's look at another one. Max, the golden retriever, couldn't help but wonder if Lily had forgotten about him. After all, his food bowl wasn't full, and his water bowl was almost empty. On top of that, Lily hadn't taken him for a walk in two days. So is this passage an example of third person limited, where it's just one point of view? Is it third person objective, where it's from an observational tone with no feelings or emotions? Or is it third person omniscient, where the author is getting into the heads of all the characters? So if you said that this is third person limited, you are correct. It's focusing on just one perspective, one character, in this case, Max the Golden Retriever. It's focusing on how Max was wondering if Lily maybe forgot about him based on the evidence and that Lily hadn't taken him for a walk in two days. So again, it's limited to just one point of view, which would be Max's point of view. So it's very limited, very focused. All right, so that was guided practice. So now we're going to transition to independent practice where you get to write down on your piece of paper which point of view you think it is, and then we'll go over the answer. All right, so let's read our passage. John felt sad and nervous. He didn't want to admit that he had broken the window. He knew it was the right thing to do though, and he resolved to tell the owner of the house first thing in the morning. So I'll read it one more time so that you can think about which point of view this passage might show. So John felt sad and nervous. He didn't want to admit that he had broken the window. He knew it was the right thing to do though, and he resolved to tell the owner of the house first thing in the morning. So is this an example of third person limited, where it's, re where it's limited to just one perspective, one point of view? Is it an example of third person objective, where it's a neutral narrator, so it's kind of like the narrator is just observing what is happening kind of from the outside? Or is it third person omniscient, where the narrator is getting into the heads of multiple characters? So you can pause the video and write down your answer. All right, so if you said this is third person limited, you are correct. That's because it's limited or focused on just one point of view. And it does give John's emotions and feelings. It says that he felt sad and nervous. So we know that it wouldn't be third person objective because this one is only strictly observational. It doesn't get into feelings and things like that. So third person limited does get into the feelings and emotions and it does say sad and nervous. And then also would not be third person omniscient because this one focuses only on John. It doesn't focus on the other characters. It says he resolved to tell the owner of the house first thing in the morning, but then it doesn't go into how the owner of the house might have felt. It focuses only on John, which is why this is third person limited. So it's very focused. Let's try another one. Stacy's alarm ring. She looked at the time and gasped. She quickly brushed her hair, grabbed her backpack and raced outside. She got to the bus just as it was leaving. So is this going to be an example of 
third person limited, where it's limited to just one person's point of view? Is it third person objective, where it states only the facts from an observational tone without going into the feelings or emotions? Or is it third person omniscient, where it goes into the heads of multiple characters? So you can pause the video and write down your answer. So if you said that this one is third person objective, you are correct. That's because it only states the facts, only from an observation point of view. It doesn't say that she felt rushed or she felt mad that she had slept in too long. It only states the facts. So it's like an observer could see or hear her alarm ring. The observer could see her look at the time and gasp. The observer could see her brush her hair and grab her backpack and race outside. The observer could see her run to the bus just as it was leaving. So it's all an observational standpoint, which is why this is third person objective. All right, how about this one? David was five feet, 10 inches. His mom was five feet, eight inches. And his dad was six feet, two inches. David's younger sister was four feet and three inches tall. Is this passage an example of third person limited where it's limited to just one person's point of view? Is it third person objective where it only states the facts from an observational standpoint? Or is the third person omniscient, kind of like all knowing, where the author gets into the heads of multiple characters? So you can pause the video and write down your answer for which one you think it might be. If you said that this was third person objective, you are correct. That's because this passage only stated the facts, only the observational point of view. So for example, the observer could see or measure that David was five feet, 10 inches. The observer could measure the mom's height and the dad's height and the younger sister's height. Again, this is all from an observational standpoint, which is why this would be third person objective. So it's not going into the feelings or emotions of any of the characters here. It's only stating the facts. So that's a third person objective. What about this one? Maddie felt slightly annoyed when the car in front of him cut over three lanes in less than 10 seconds. He didn't know that Heidi, the woman in the other car, was rushing her daughter to the hospital and wasn't usually such a speedy driver. Nancy was terrified and needed the nurse to see her daughter as soon as possible. So is this passage an example of third person limited, where it's limited to just one point of view? Is it third person objective, where it only states the facts from an observational point of view? It doesn't give any, any insight into the feelings of the characters. Or is it third person omniscient, where the author is kind of switching between the characters and giving each person's point of view and kind of showing what's going on in the heads of multiple characters? So you can pause the video and write down the answer. Write down your answer. So if you said that this is third person omniscient, you are correct. Again, the author is telling us what's going on in the heads of multiple characters. So the narrator can kind of enter any character and tell what, that, what all of the characters are feeling. So it says that Maddie is feeling slightly annoyed because the car cut in front of him. And then it talks about Heidi, the woman in the other car, and then it talks about someone else, which is Nancy and how Nancy was terrified and needed the nurse to see her daughter as soon as possible. So it's going into all three characters' feelings and emotions. That's why this is going to be third person omniscient. All right, next one. Anna enjoyed baking more than anything else in the world. She would spend hours whipping up delicious desserts in the kitchen from pink frosted cupcakes to huge batches of chocolate chip cookie dough. Her bakery always smelled delicious. So is this an example of third person limited, third person objective, or third person omniscient? And you can use the notes that you wrote down on these three types of point of views to think about your answer and figure out which point of view that this might be. So you can pause the video and write down your answer. So if you said that this is third person limited, you are correct. 
That's because it's focusing only on one character, only on one point of view. It's talking about how Anna enjoyed baking. It's talking about how she loved to spend hours whipping up those desserts. And then it says like her bakery always smelled delicious. So it's giving both the facts as well as the feelings, the emotions of the character and just one character, just Anna. So that's why it's third person limited because it's focused only on her, only on her point of view. All right, and I believe that this is the last one. Liam and Lizzie were as different as night and day. Liam enjoyed watching TV and playing sports, while Lizzie preferred socializing and making arts and crafts. Liam felt most happy training for his next big game, while Lizzie felt most happy drawing, painting, or coloring. So is this passage an example of third person limited, third person objective, or third person omniscient? You can use your notes that you wrote down to figure out which point of view that this might be out of these three categories, and then you can pause the video and write down your answer. So if you said that this is an example of third person omniscient, you are correct. That's because the narrator or author is entering all of the characters and telling us what is going on in the heads of all these characters, in this case, Liam and Lizzie. It's talking about how Liam enjoys watching TV and playing sports, and it's talking about how Lizzie prefers socializing in arts and crafts, and how Liam feels happy training for his next game, and Lizzie feels happy drawing, painting, or coloring. So it's going into the emotions of multiple characters, what's going on in the heads of multiple characters. That's why it's third person omniscient or all knowing. The narrator knows all of it. All right, so for this lesson, we were able to determine the point of view of a story. So first we did first person, second person, and third person. And then after that, we went into the three categories of third person, which is third person limited, third person objective, and third person omniscient. So we did complete our learning objective of being able to determine the point of view of a story. So we also completed our agenda of first reviewing the vocabulary. What does first person and second person and third person mean? What pronouns do they both use? Do all three of them use? And then we talked about the three categories of third person. Then we did a identify the voice activity, first person, second person, third person. Then we identified the point of view that was for third person where we differentiated between third person limited, third person objective, and third person omniscient. And so I hope that you enjoyed this lesson. I know that I certainly did. I had a lot of fun with it. And I hope that you continue to practice your knowledge and refine your knowledge of points of view. And I will see you later.